Yep. Grant almost fooled me into thinking he could burn water. Because I know that's like a joke. And I was like, he's like, I can't make anything. I burn water. And I'm like, what? No, you can't do that. No way. Actually, There's no. There's no I, fucking way you can do that. I have done that a couple times when I forget that I'm boiling water on the stove. And then it uh, evaporates all the way down to the pan mm-hmm. and then ruins it. You know you can light snow on fire? No, you can't. Yeah, you can. No, you can't. Yeah, you can. Prove it. Give me some snow. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, welcome back. I'm your host. I'm Ben. We got Scott and Kieran over here. We're going to talk about some anime here today and then go back to talking about video games because it's E3 time. Yep. But it's not E3 time right now. It's anime time. Here anime! Loop on the third, part five, episode 10. Lupin and Elbear team up to storm the castle of Jose, the leader of the flashy assassins, who we've barely seen, but is apparently supposed to be the big bad of this arc. They murderfy the flashy assassins in some surprisingly bloody deaths, and part as friendly rivals and or rivalrous friends, with Albert pickpocketing what turns out to be a fake notebook from Lupin. Loot book, Lupin. Loot book. Uh, it's, it's a book with loot in it. It's randomized. No. Lupin leaves the real notebook on his friend's grave instead of using it to, like, expose the apparently rampant corruption in the French government or anything. Yeah, huh. <laughs> By the way, it is actually Jose. They just say Jose because the Japanese. How, how, uh, how do we pronounce? Uh... <laughs> I think Albert is supposed to be Albert, but they say Jose, and I'm like, that's just Jose. It's just Jose. <laughs> yeah. It's Jose. God dang it. So I feel like they've added the Alberto to, to words. If it's Albert. I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, so yeah, episode. I, Albert sounds Frenchy. Yeah. Albert. Maybe it's Jose. Maybe that's how you say it in French. I have I don't, no idea. I don't think Man, it is. I'm I, not a. I kind of don't think it is either. I'm not mm. a Frank. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, this this episode took a pivot. Uh, mm-hmm. Like it's been fairly grounded noiry European intrigue stuff with you know some weird assassins, and then all of a sudden, no, this is cr- wacky, crazy. Fun times, apparently. I mean, fun times in, 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 in that there's a bunch of gunfighting and very, like, hardcore violence. Yeah, that's what he said, fun. Yeah, yeah, to be fair. Yeah, the, 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 the red mage got kicked into an iron maiden and squished yeah. like a little bitch. Was, was, the, I, was the red mage a guy or a girl, or was it supposed to be indeterminable? I assumed a guy, but yeah, maybe too. that says more about me. Carmen San Diego's dead though. That's all there is to it. Yes. Yep. Goemon got after not really having much to do for actually either of these arcs. Actually, yeah. Goemon often doesn't seem to have much to do, but uh, he got a a pretty dope samurai fight with Hot Topic mm-hmm. Lady. That was cool. Yeah, I didn't know what he flicked into her eyes until she said it, but that is the coolest. Oh. I'm like, her nails? Oh, it's so cool! Oh, and I, then, yeah. I saw it glimmering on the ground uh, when he landed, and I'm like, oh shit, he's gonna do something with her fingernails. Oh shit, they went into her eyes! Yeah, yeah that, that was, was Yeah. That was painful, in a good way. Yeah, also, when I, I, when I saw the cut happen, I thought it was gonna cut away, and then it didn't, yeah. and I was... Squick the fuck out, because that is that is more violent than I am actually used to in Lupin. Although, then again, actually, some of the old movies did not shy away from that. They went to some pretty bloody places as well. This just like, goddamn. Also, yeah. was Jose just a robot? Cyborg. Okay. Just, he apparently has gallons of, uh, of nitro in his chest. He just fucking explodes. Okay. Yep. I would say mm-hmm. the weakest out of like that whole gang was the little boy girl, the one with the, the yeah the, the scorpion string. hook thing. Yeah, mm-hmm. not not that they didn't do some cool stuff, and not that they weren't intimidating enough, but they just were like, okay, you were the most anime thing out of this entire shtick, and you're just kind of there to be, I don't know, creepy and, and whatever. They were there for Goemon and Jigen to do things. Except yeah. for Albert, uh, Albert is the one who ended up taking care of them. Yeah. Yeah, Jigen just kind of got forgotten past a certain point. Like, he was, he was in the car with them, and then he shows up again at the end of the episode. Like, wait, what? 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 Uh, actually, yeah, I'm actually not sure, because, you know, he drops off, going on to fight, uh, what's her face, yeah. and then it's all uh, Albert and Lupin from... The- wait, no, 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 uh, because, yeah, Jigen was earlier on, wasn't he? Hmm. Yeah, I forget where we actually lost... Lo- we lost Jigen actually rather early on. Is that indicative of anything about this episode and arc? 
I mean, we, here's the thing. When it comes to Lupin, they're, like, certain characters will drop in and out as they're necessary. I'm talking about our inability to recall what's going on. I mean, I who we people are. I can and tell where you. They are. I can tell you ninety percent of what happened in this episode. Just there's a little bit yeah, of ten percent where things moved a you, little. You fast. could, and I would retain exactly as little of it as <laughs> when I watched the episode. I, I find it. I find it weird. Usually, I'm the one who's having trouble like following this stuff. I, I, I don't think it's because it's actually that complicated. I think it's just because I don't care. Ah. Like, here's the thing. Look, I'm not going to front here. I'm going to hold up this eggplant, mostly because this arc is over and mo maybe the next arc will be better. Or maybe the next standalone episode will be better. So I do not, like... We are getting a green jacket episode, a red jacket episode mm -hmm. next one. Yeah, it's so yeah. so so up for you for that. R remind me what the red jacket denotes. Uh, so the green jacket was the first series and was actually put together by a couple of uh, couple of different people, but more importantly was put together uh, with the help of Hayao Miyazaki. Mm -hmm. uh, and I believe also Isao Takahashi, which was another Ghibli director. Mm -hmm. um, and it was known for having a still kooky, but somewhat more down to earth tone and some dark moments. Like it, it was one of the darker shows. Red, the Red Jacket, which is the second series that they produced, uh, is where Lupin Third okay. comes from. That, like, that's, that's the one, the that, one that, we've that I'm seen. familiar yeah, with. Yeah, the one that you saw on Adult Swim. Um, now the interesting thing is, Monkey Punch himself says he prefers the red jacket. Uh, it's as proposed to a lot of people who actually prefer the green jacket in its design and its, and its aesthetic. But red jacket is probably the most popular, well-known version of Lupin, and yeah, that's the one that aired on Toonami. That's the one that got the most movies and specials. So yeah, you're gonna you're like, we're about to go into the most mainstream version of Lupin, which means this episode's gonna be crazy. It's gonna be uh, over the top craziness. And based on based on the next episode preview, looks like pretty uh, Fujiko heavy, which interests me. Yes, yeah. yeah. Fujiko uh, played a pretty big, well, depending on the episode, but yeah. when she was involved, she was usually kind of a like key point to whatever episode. Um, she was interesting in Green Jacket, and I cannot wait till we get the episode, the Green Jacket episode. How they how they handle her is gonna be really interesting. But and which jacket was we already had the one off from, and it was goofy fun times all the time. Series three, so they're going in reverse, which I think is a br brilliant idea. Do not save Pink Jacket for last. That would be the worst. Um, but yeah, no, it's. That's why I'm excited about the next one, and then I guess in five more episodes we'll get the green and yay. All right, but. But yeah, for me, like, I thought this episode was fantastic. Like, there's so much action. There's so much going on between Lupin and Albert. They're such a great duo that would have overstayed their welcome if they'd been around for too long. Also, apparently they fought a jaguar man in Mexico. Yeah, I was like, yeah. what? <laughs> that ja what? Jaguar? What? That may have been the highlight of the episode, in my estimation. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I love his, like... Okay, now we're even for Mexico. And I'm like, hey. also, whoever's playing Albert, I love his actor. He's, He's really, he, it's like, it's, it sounds like the guy that plays Dio, but it's, I, I don't know if it is. I don't think it's, it actually, it God. Sounds real close. It does. That's, I kept getting that feeling. That might be the same guy who played Dio. But I love his tones because he's just so smug yeah, and he's so really good. smug. And also, like, uh, hey, it's June. What a fantastic gay character. Like, uh, yeah, like right? I'm so no, happy. It like, was good. Like, not only, like, he's gay, but that's not at the forefront of his personality. It's just a fact about him. Otherwise, he's a super cool, super snarky, super smug, like, awesome thief who's rivaled only by Lupin the goddamn third. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it made me happy. Um, and, like, that scene where he's like, all right, we go on two. One, two. Lupin runs out and starts getting shot at. And I'm like, there's... Not a lot of characters can keep Lupin on his back foot like this, and I love it. Um, also, Lupin whips out some nunchucks at one point. So yes! there's that. Oh, that's right. Yes, let's see where he throws out the nunchucks and fucking <laughs> no sold by yeah. San Diego. Mm -hmm. Yeah, see, that's the thing. I don't. I may sound like I'm poo pooing this episode. I'm really not. I'm poo pooing the whole rest of this arc and the fact that they apparently had no fucking clue how to actually wrap it up in a satisfying way, so they said, I don't know, let's get goofy instead. Like, if that had been the tone of this whole arc, hey, great. It's just kind of a weird, disjointed mess at the end of it. I, I can't, I can't d uh, disagree with you that the tone's at a bit of a, bit of a butting heads there, because, 
Yeah, the very beginning, especially that first episode. Remember that first mm -hmm. episode with the great camera angles and yeah, the music? Yeah, no, that first episode was really like picturesque and awesome storyboarding, like all the way through, really cool setup, and then it just kind of threw in too many cooks in the kitchen, I felt. Yeah, I would definitely say that this suffered the moment, <clears throat> sorry, all up into the, se like all, all the way up to the end of the second episode, fantastic, on point with its tone, its themes, its ideas, and then at the beginning of episode three, Assassins! And it's like, mm -hmm. oh, we got one of those and it was San Diego, but we thought it was gonna be kind of a one-off or mm -hmm. you know, just a little bit of like, yeah, this is the trouble that the notebook brings you. Then they're an actual faction and then they become the focal point and it's like, oh, okay. Now you just kind of took away a lot of the tone and, and goal here. But for me, that was okay because it also gave us moments to see Albert and Lupin in action. And that's the part that kept me more interested. That's the part that I was like, okay, the plot kind of went in a different direction. The tone's been discordant. But shit, everything that's happening here is so fun and enjoyable that I could hardly complain. So I guess, I guess for me, this, it, it's an easy eggplant, but I can see how it's an eggplant through virtue for you, Ben. Kieran, how you feeling? I think I've run dry of what I know I know what the show is doing. I'm really I, I it's not a bad show. It's doing exactly what it needs to for exactly who it's for. I just think with every other thing I'm watching right now, it was it was difficult for me to keep up in like at its level with also everything else I'm watching. And I think it's honestly just that. I might go back and watch it later on my own if it gets cut. You know, uh something I should point out. Um some people have asked, like, why didn't you like season four? And or, uh, yeah, season four. And I'm like, the reason I didn't like season four, besides the fact that Rebecca's the worst, and I'm going to stand by that no matter what, it was episodic. Mm. I want you to imagine Lupin episodic again. Like, one of the virtues of this series is that it's had room to tell stories. Like, it's, four, it's a one plot line over four episodes, which allows things to move at a steadier pace, steadier, maybe not the steadiest, as we saw in the last two episodes, and tell something comprehensible and enjoyable. Whereas in, 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 there was no room for that in season four. Like they had a couple of multi-parters, but a lot of it was a lot of the standalone stuff that was, I don't know, not as enjoyable to me and way too goofy at points. Like there's this episode about a gangster who his entire point is that he puts everybody in the hospital because he shoots them all over but avoids hitting their uh, vitals. And it's, it's really dumb and really not enjoyable. So like this season, on the other hand, I love its pacing. I love its story structure. I love its music and its style. The music's awesome. Yeah. Oh, my God. Soundtrack in this episode was amazing. Do you ever hear when they use the ending theme as a, mm -hmm. as a motif? Yep. The moment that hits, I'm like, mm. God, I'm so glad we're in France. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a double fuck for good old Lupin. Uh, nothing in danger of dying quite yet. Uh, let's talk about Hinamatsuri, something that's always been real dumb, but consistently enjoyable. In episode 10, Udako pressures Hitomi into moving out on her own and taking a bunch of odd jobs, and Hitomi is driven to new levels of exhaustion by her inability to tell people no. She learns nothing, and nothing changes. Then, Anzu bets on horse racing to try to buy her foster parents a dope gift, but loses all her money. And that's... That's like the broadest level synopsis I could possibly give. It's all in the individual moments in this episode. Uh, I, it might have sounded like I gave that first segment short shrift, but I still actually really liked it. I, I am, loved it. I am fine with the fact that nothing changed and she loses. She like makes no change in her life or in her arc. I think that is a fun... Sometimes that's how shit goes down. <laughs> like, I, oh man, yeah. I'm really fucking things up. Am I going to change these patterns? Probably not. <laughs> I, I love you, Tommy. I love her thinking about like, have I ever met an adult that's helped me? That they all kind of suck. <laughs> and I was <laughs> like, yeah, you know, you know what's up. Yeah. And God, the bit with Anzu at the end, it almost makes me cry. Like every time I do shit with her, I'm like, yeah. you're so pure. I love you. <sighs> Scott, you look like you have something on your mind. I didn't like this episode. Because nobody developed. No. Oh, no, no. That, I mean, 
now that you bring it up, it's like, huh, yeah, I guess by the end of it, like, everybody was still, like, except for Anzu. Anzu gets a little bit of de development, I think. Mm -hmm. um, Anzu's development has been interesting because it is a wall to overcome with her, whereas mm -hmm. with Hitomi, it's just a flat out, like, not understanding what her own problem is and what she needs to do. She's a coward when it comes to conflict, and she won't just put up. Um, and that's something that she needs to get over. That's, that's her whole deal, is that that's her biggest shortcoming. Um, okay, so my problem with this episode in general is that it felt uncomfortably mean-spirited. And also, it stretches the credulity for me to an extent where otherwise I've been able to accept it with a single job at a bar for this girl but now that it's gone into all of these odd jobs and these older men requesting that this middle school work for them, a middle schooler, I'm like, okay. And that we've reached the part where the comedy is no longer balancing out with that absurdity. I am now at a point where I'm like, this seems less funny and more just absurdist. Uh, and the fact that Hitomi and Anzu gets like, either strong-armed or misled into doing the wrong thing by people just kind of left a sour taste in my mouth because there's no comeuppance for them, no hard lessons learned for the other characters. It just feels kind of gross. Like I've been again, this I've been able to laugh at everything up until this point. It's the, that's the good part about Hinamatsuri for me is that it's always struck this great balance of that's mean spirited, but fuck, it's funny. Here, I don't know. It it. I don't, maybe I was in a bad mood, maybe the wrong time, wrong vibe, but... I, I would disagree that it felt gross. Uh, I think what the strongest criticism I could levy against this episode is that it felt kind of light and fluffy, because at its best, this show uh, manages to balance that absurdist humor with the characters actually being characters, learning something, having an arc. This was not that. It was just Hitomi fucks up in the same way all episode. That's it. Uh, Anzu, I mean, Anzu might have, there was a little bit of a lesson by the end there. Like, oh, it's the thought that counts. Mm -hmm. That's a pretty basic ass lesson. There's not any real nuance beyond that. But moment to moment, it was still funny enough that I wasn't sitting there with a bad taste in my mouth. Just like, yeah, there have been better episodes. I still fucking love this show. I mean, like, look, I'm not going to hold up a knife. I love Hina Monster. It's my favorite show this season, like, bar none. It's just this one episode, I was like, remember, remember when we talked about Hitomi working the bar for the first time? And I'm like, this is crazy. That's so dumb and crazy that a middle school girl is, wor a middle school girl is working at a bar. But that was hilarious to me. I thought that was the funniest damn thing. It was one of my, it's been one of my favorite parts of this show. Every time they cut back to the bar, I'm like, yes, Hitomi is the bartender. I love Hitomi. I love her relation. I loved her relationship with Utako. But in this episode, it's really uncomfortable. I she strong arms her into buying, uh, into like signing that lease for a condo she can't afford. Uh, and I, I think that is the biggest flaw of the episode to me is that at no point did I feel like Utako's actions were arising out of her character. When she strong arms her into working at the bar, that, like, there's something in it for her. Like, oh my God, you're this dope, incredibly gifted bartender. You gotta keep doing this. She's not getting anything out of her getting an apartment and working all these other jobs. It felt like she was a plot device to make Hitomi uncomfortable. And that wasn't great, but... Again, I'm willing to forgive it. Well, the the reasoning that they give there, which is fine enough reasoning, uh, is that she lacked independence as a kid. Mm -hmm. And she's like, no, she has a chance here. She has a chance to live on her own and do things her own way. And that all lines up with what the theme of this show is, growing up as a young woman. Like, again, Hina Matsuri is the celebration of what it means to be a, a girl. And, and if they'd given that more space or examined it more, then I'd agree. As it is, that just felt like a tossed-in explanation. And then past a certain point, Utako largely disappears from the story. Uh, kind of. I mean, she's there for the party where her mom's at. I mean, which... she's physically there, but she's not part of the ongoing arc of what's happening. Also, the, the joke about what was going to happen with the mom was obvious and not as funny as I think they wanted it to be, where the mom was actually like, no, this is good for you. You're making all these connections. And I'm like, yep, I knew that. I knew that was going to come, because there's obviously no way that they were going to put a 
cap on this with the mom. It's just... Uh, I mean, it's not that I didn't see it coming, but I thought it was played perfectly. The facial expressions, just the dawning realization. Like, oh no, oh no, I thought I'd set mm. everything up so that I wouldn't actually have to deal with my shit, but would get out of this anyway. And it's all coming crashing down. And like, I was still 100% on the show's wavelength. And you know, God, I can give it that too. That, hey, I, she tries to, no, my mom will take care of this for me. And nope. No, he told me the only person who's going to get you out of these stu terrible, stressful situations is you. Yep. Um, and, and, I, and I would still like to see Hitomi actually learn that and actually move forward and actually have a character arc. If it doesn't come this episode, oh well. Oh, I, I didn't need it to come this episode. Yeah. Again, my ultimate problem is the level that it takes up here is absurd. To, to the point where it was no longer funny for me. That's my issue, is that... Yeah, this huge step of suddenly moving into her own place and then working multiple jobs. Yeah, no, nah, I, I can't take it. Like, I'm like, no, nah, that... You, it, her working at the bar, her then being class president, her then having the, all these normal responsibilities on top of her over-the-top one. Okay, cool. This is Hina Matsuri. I can get on board with that amount of craziness. This was just too much. And that's, that's, that's all I can say about it. Um, I, I don't know what too much would <laughs> consist of for this show, but this wasn't it. Do I want this every episode? No, but as a premise for this one episode, yeah, sure. I'll go with it. Boop. Yeah. Eggplant. Also, freaking, I'm, I, I'm starting to get the note that uh, Yakuza, Yakuza dude mm -hmm. is just the worst kind of person. Which one? The, uh, the like, Kohai? The yeah, yeah, yeah. Squinty Eye dude? Oh, yeah, yeah. He's, the, he's the worst kind of person because... He seems nice and friendly on the outside, but he's actually a total cowardly jackass. Yep. Who puts people in bad situations and then doesn't own responsibility for it. Yep. Uh, and I was like, man, uh, it's kind of making me uncomfortable a little bit that like this guy is is doing this shit. And I I don't know. Oh, usually see, that doesn't make me uncomfortable at all. That's that is what this show is about. Sometimes people are kind of shitty, and you have to deal with it. Yeah. Yeah. I just I. I guess I guess my problem in this episode is that uh, these kids are getting kind of picked on and and shat on and it it kind of sucks. Welcome to the show. I don't yeah. know what show you've been watching that wasn't that all along. Well, you, again, usually Hitomi being Hitomi being hapless for me is usually pretty funny. Like I can I can get on board with it because again, it's always been within this acceptable realm, but I don't know. Maybe maybe the reason that they pushed it to such extremes here is that they're going to wrap it up in some, or they're going to make some headway in the next couple of episodes. I don't know, but again, I'm going to give this the eggplant because I still love this show and it's one of my favorites of the season. This is just the first time, literally the first time where the absurdity was too high and I just felt more uncomfortable than I did, like, in humored. I have no idea. It's still amazing. It's exactly what it is. You know exactly what you're getting. It's hilarious. It's so fucking funny. Everything that's absurd about the show is why it's good. It's absurd for a reason. Everything's fucking hysterical. I love the show. Yep, 100%. Let's talk about whether we love Legend of the Galactic Heroes, the new thesis. In episode nine, the Alliance politicians vote to take the offensive against the Empire in a bid to shore up their failing approval numbers. Yang submits a request for early retirement, but it doesn't look as though the military will let him go so easily. In Fezzan, President Baldburns is quietly establish, establishing economic control of both the Alliance and the Empire. Meanwhile, Jessica decides to run for office on an anti-war platform. This felt like a real transitional, interstitial episode. Like, a lot of table setting, a mm -hmm. lot of... Kind of a weird amount of table setting for an episode 9 out of 12, but of course they are continuing the story in movies after this. Oh, so you know what the uh, idea of the movies is, by the way? What's that? Uh, they're basically four episodes made into movies. Oh, the futurama it. Yeah, exactly. What they're doing Ooh. with the Digimon movies lately. Okay. Yeah, so I'm actually kind of on board with that. I'm okay with that. I, I tend to be nervous about that. I think that storytelling-wise, it can be rough to try to serve multiple masters that way. Like, yeah, it's a movie, but it's also four episodes when we break it up later. I think that that tends to lead to pacing problems and structural problems and general weirdness. I mean, maybe this will be not that at all, and I hope so. I hope it's great. It just mildly worries me. I just see it as the binge-watching format. Yeah. 
Um, that's why. That's why. Like whenever, uh, whenever they put the Digimon movies out there, they Crunchyroll has them as like five episodes, six episodes. Like it's like here, boom, done. Just watch them all in a row, and that's how you do mm-hmm. it. Um, I actually really like this episode. Is that weird? Maybe a little, but did, no, go yeah, on. Maybe a little. Um, I. So maybe it's because of our current political climate. Maybe, like, politics is an all-time high for every single person in the world right now, for better or for worse. Uh, but here, we see one of, the biggest, uh, one of the biggest military successes that the, uh, that, uh, the Federation, Alliance, whatever, has ever had. They captured Izalon and then put everyone at a standstill. They essentially have stopped the war. At, by doing that, like yeah. they put it at a standstill, nobody is like, uh, shit, now what do we do? So, what is your next step after that? Well, you've got one of two choices you broker for peace, or you say, no, this is a war for justice. We're coming after you and we're going to win this war. We're not going to stop with a, with a treaty or peace treaty, no. And you can do that, you can do either of those for multiple reasons. Like, those are two decisions that could be made. But for multiple reasons, and here we see a disastrous take on number two, which is, yeah, but our, 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 our uh, approval numbers are just way down. If, if we don't have another success, we're, we're probably going to get voted out. And it's like, that is gross, terrible bullshit that I wholeheartedly believe. You, you want to talk about gross, terrible bullshit. How about the line about, oh, man. So many people survived from the last battle. Now we've got to pay pensions to all of them? Fuck, that's going to wreck our budget. Oh, yep. my God, that hit home so fucking hard. Yep. And well, that's, like, usually I hate these dry conversations about politics, but here I'm like, yeah, no, not only is this easy to follow, but it rings frighteningly true. A bunch of people who are treating its its population and its soldiers as Hans, and it you're just seeing like a decision, a catastrophic decision being made for the sake of a room of people. That's all. Mm-hmm. And so we see all the, the, the struggle that all these people have had to make, the victory that Yang had gained. Go to not. Now it means nothing. Because now they're going to go back into the war. They're going to attack the uh, the uh, the empire, the yeah. empire, and it's going to go terribly. They're going to plunge themselves in, into an even more violent and even worse situation because now the empire is going to be backed into a corner, and these people have already proven themselves to be catastrophically like vicious. So it's like, well, and then you, and, oh, and then you have the third party in this, like, so we also have that scene with the pheasant, was it? Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Which are basically like, so if the Federation or the Alliance or whatever, if, they're, if the Rebel Alliance is basically kind of like the EU, or, or no, um, yeah, the EU, uh, or, or and, and then you have like Germany, basically like, you know, these, you know, you have the, uh, uh, with, with, with the Empire. You've got America over here like, yeah, we're going to make so much money selling weapons to both these assholes and it's going to be great. I don't think that I don't think that metaphor tracks, but I see what you're saying. <laughs> yeah. Well, I just I, I I love the fact that yeah, there's on the side you have war profiteers, and that's the, all they're mm-hmm. there for. Yeah. It's like, oh yeah, no, we're neutral, we're peaceful. Also, we've got all these guns that we're not using, so do yeah. you want them? Also, we kind of own y'all. So yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Also, it's mm-hmm. like it, during this, it's like yeah, we don't have to fight you, we just have to own you. <laughs> Yeah, I, I like this episode for all the world building. I I wound up taking a, a small wiki dive to try and remember the name of a character from my notes. I couldn't remember Jessica's first name. And anytime I dabble my toe into a into a Legend of the Galactic Hero, Heroes wiki, I always see something that's like, oh man, that looks weird. I wanna I can't wait till we get to that part. Oh yeah. <laughs> like the the depth of this world is it's is kind of what's keeping me going. Yeah. yeah. I, I try and avoid looking up certain characters. Yeah. Oh, I do last, too. The last thing I want to see is status deceased. Fuck! Oh, trust yeah. me. I've been spoiled for a few things at this point. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't care because it's just tantalizing enough. I want to know how we get there. Yeah. 
Jessica is also coming to her own as a character in a great way too because I loved her early on. Like the moment she shows up and is like, you're, a f you're like, oh, you want to stand out there and talk about all the people who made sacrifices, all the people, well, you're standing in a room safe and alive. And it's like, yeah, girl, you get it. I like it ending with her speech. I think that was a really good point. Yeah. That was good. She's, she's a, I, I'm really hoping that she's a character like that sticks around because I feel like she's a character that very easily in like, in the first quote unquote season that could be killed as a big dramatic plot point. I hope she sticks around for a while and really puts a thorn in the, uh, in, in the sides of everybody. So is it just me or Admiral Greenhill, the dad of uh, Lieutenant Nepotism, Mm -hmm. Was he or was he not just straight up, hey, so you going to marry my daughter or what? Oh, totally. That's that whole setting. Yeah, yeah I, w I would love to see more happen with that de facto love triangle of, hey, here's your dead friend's uh, girl over here. Here's, you know, here's the anti-war side mm -hmm. as personified by a pretty lady. Mm -hmm. Here's yeah. the military as personified by a pretty lady. What you going to do? How you going to act? Yeah. yeah. And I, the sh it's very clearly set up. Mm -hmm. but I like it. Yeah. I like the fact it's like, you got two girls in your life. One wants your job, and the other one want, is, is part of your job. What do you do? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but they both want that dick. <laughs> <laughs> it was cool seeing Julian do, do, do some stuff. I liked him in this episode. Like and him just being like, yeah, she came by, told me this. She's like, oh, okay, cool. That was nice. Like when they get out and you know talk to the officers for a bit, and they're walking, just kind of talking for a bit. It's like, yeah, that's nice. Yeah, I agree. Like there, I I like when he's looking up to the sky, and you know they're both looking at the same star, and then and, it, and it's kind of cheesy, but I like the line where no, Yang's I, like, I liked it too. Yeah, where Yang's like, you know, you don't always have to look at the same star I'm looking at, and Julian's like, what? <laughs> and I'm like, he's like, don't worry about it. Yeah. Don't worry. Yep. And we saw just a little bit more of Captain Bad Boy here. It was mm, a, oh a yeah. Elevator scene where he's like, mm -hmm. so you thinking about getting out? I'm um, just just you know, if we have someone like you in charge, we'll probably go home alive. I'm into that. Yeah. By the way, if you were to wind up in de facto command of this faction, I'd be behind you. You know, you want to pull some, uh, no, you're not about that, but when you get about that, give me a call. Just let me know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, and I I'm, loved him going, I want to be 150 and hear my great grandkids so happy that I die. <laughs> <laughs> I want to die, uh, you know, I want to die at the age of 80 with a belly full of wine and a girl around my cock. <laughs> Is that all, it's all I could think during that scene. <laughs> And yeah, no, I love him. I love that character. And if he becomes a mainstay of the story, like I won't lie to you. After this is, uh, season is over, if you don't think I'm going to go on my fucking high dive account and start watching more episodes. Wow, I actually did not like this show all that much to start. And now I'm actually excited. <laughs> After this particular episode, because this is the first episode in this entire show where everything clicked for me. I think, well, I think they had a... This is what I, I think I understood with the slow burn is they had to set up a lot yeah. of stuff. And it could seem intimidating when you think like, I, oh, who's this guy? Who's that guy? I'm going to forget. But really, no, it is about like 10 people overall. Uh, but we had to get you invested in all of them. Yeah, I am so glad that the cast is. They, yeah, it makes you think like, oh, look at this huge cast. But yeah. really, it's all just dressing. Yeah. So I, I agree. I I'm glad we stuck out with it for this long because by this episode, I realized I was emotionally invested in the machinations of what was happening mm -hmm. and how it was going to affect our characters. And I did not feel that at first. Yeah. yeah. It's just crazy to me that we only have three episodes left in this season yeah. of the show. I, mean, I, I know, and it's probably going to end on some fucking cliffhanger. But, yeah. like, but you know, if they're doing the movie format, which I kind of like, I think that's good. So I'll be, I'll be curious to see that for sure. Yeah. But, yeah, I'm, I'm with you. Unless these next three episodes shit the bed real bad, I might not want to wait for them movies. I might want to get on that high dive and see what that real shit from the 70s is about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Was that, oh, was that from the 70s? I thought it was early 80s. It might have been. It's late 70s, early 80s. Yeah. Either, either one. It, I think it might be early 80s, actually. Regardless, it's just, it is old. <laughs> yeah, no. I know. As a guy who watched the first couple episodes, who? Man, looking yeah. at the difference between the maps that they use, I'm like, oh, <laughs> damn. Yeah. CG wasn't even a, it was barely a concept. Yeah, no, there was a, I, I do think the, one of the show's strength is I, I think it was worrisome in a bit. Like the things came off a little plastic and stuff, but I actually really like the art. Yeah. I think the fact that the art, like when there's not a lot of movement, 
it lets the art and the character designs really come through. Because the character designs are really strong for as like subtle as they are with so many people. I, I never am lost on who's who, which I think is good. Yeah, by and large, I agree. Yeah, it's, uh, they're very grounded designs, but they manage to avoid that trap of same face, everybody mm -hmm. who's talking right now. And that's, yeah. that's really impressive when you, the fact that you don't have to stop and think about it. <laughs> yeah. I might not always remember names. Yeah. But you know who it is. Yeah, and cool. that's, that's more important for me because I, God help me, could not name half the characters in My Hero Academia, even though they <laughs> all look fast. Yeah, they all look incredible, different. but yeah. yeah. But... Yeah, this this sort of show with all this world building and all these characters, you know, a manageable number of main characters, but a huge cast overall. Like, this is the kind of show for the wiki era. <laughs> no, absolutely. This is the kind of stuff that I, when it's done right, like, I fucking love Lord of the Rings. I've always talked about how much yeah. I love Middle Earth and all the giant ass lore it has and just a story that can pace itself well. It might be a little slow at parts, but that's because it has to for you to care. Yeah. So I've, the pace hasn't really ever bothered me. I'm, I'm really happy to see some things like and some consequences actually start showing up. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, for the first time since the series started, I see why it's got its fans. Like, <laughs> I, I, I get it now. I'm, I'm, I don't think I'm hardcore into this show, but I'm excited for the next episode, and that's the first time I felt that about this show. Otherwise, I've just been like, yeah, it's kind of neat. I can see some machinations going on and some, some building. No, this is great. I love it. I'm right there with you. I'm super happy to see this world fleshed out even a little more, and I agree. If they dumped all of this on us from the beginning, no. The, mm -hmm. the slow build is what you need to do. So try Fucta for Legend of the Galactic Heroes. So... I would, I, oh... So I was just at Akon and I went by the Sentai booth and they're the ones who have it, the original. Yeah, that giant oh, eight hundred dollar yeah. box. Yeah. yeah, I was gonna bring that up. It looks fucking crazy. Oh, I'm yeah. yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm, I am going to say, uh, this this adaptation of the novels, it does put you at a small bit of a disadvantage, because it does actually cut some character building stuff that happens earlier on. Uh, because they wanted to focus on kind of the big, because they knew what the medium they were working with was, and that was a visual storytelling medium of big war and, and, and sci-fi, and we need to show you what this is all going to be about. But to that extent, there are some, there are some s things that you lose in that. Yeah. So I wish it hadn't taken so long. That being said, now that we're here, okay, cool, cool. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm on board. Guys, let's see if we're still on board with Golden Kamui as of episode nine, in which the escape king recognizes Murder Boner from prison, so Murder Boner and Sugimoto have a fight. Just as Sugi seems to have won, a fucking killer whale deep blue sees his ass, snags Murder Boner right off the beach. Sugi retrieves him and skins him for his tattoos. Meanwhile, two renegade soldiers from the 7th try to murder sideburns at the Ainu village because reasons. What a disjointed-ass episode where that first segment with the whale and murder boner and all that stuff, I am right on board like, yeah, let's get crazy. Let's do crazy shit. And then the back half was, who are these people and why do I care? I have lost all ability to keep track of these characters and who's betraying who for what now. Uh... They're members of the seventh who blame what's his face for what Sugimoto did. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's okay. That Cause he also went, he also went away with the hunter who they didn't know about. Sugimoto escaped. People thought they escaped and they still don't know that he fucked over everybody else. Yeah. Um, that's, I will, I will, I won't lie to you. Uh, that's hard to keep track of. They don't do a gr good job at specifying like who these guys are and why they're at the village. But it also, did. a lot of these dudes from the 7th, a lot of these blue uniforms are really same-facey. Am I wrong in that uh, one of those guys was one of the twins? It is one of the twins, yeah. Yes, okay. Because okay. so, Sugimoga killed the other. Yeah, yeah, okay. So it's one of the and twins. And they think, because they think he's the one that did it. So that's why they're like, I'm, we're going to fucking kill him. Yeah. Um, so, but yeah, let's talk about that first part. That first part, what a crazy... <laughs> Crazy fucking yeah, what? It, it was Again. a really cool sequence that I I glossed over really quickly in the summary because a lot more happens. Yeah, <laughs> her her discovering the dead body and then just from then on it is, let's fucking go. Yeah, this shit is so 
wild. By the way, here's a rich fisherman merchant dude with a fucking uh, machine gun because... Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, fucking early ass Gatling gun that he got, I guess, from the Russians. Or, I or love somewhere. that scene. Like, look at this. Mm. It's like it, it just reminds me of one of those rich bastards who buy guns and mm. then like to show them off. And then yeah, he's he starts firing on them, and it's like a great sequence because they're like, wait, that hat, Sugimoto, <laughs> <laughs> and fucking Us Aserpa has to go to the bathroom. <laughs> I like the um. And yeah, just the fucking crazy murder dude was spectacular. Everything yep. with him was so good. I love how much they're playing up the sexy angle with like yeah. almost everything in this show, but like just that there's something sexual about them fighting. Yes. I love that. And how Sugimoto gets into oh, it. Oh, and he's yeah. like, like, oh, I get it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and you think, you would think for a moment that Sugimoto would be like, Ugh, okay, never mind. But no, he's like, don't worry. I'll always remember how you gleam. Yeah. And I'm like, yes! Yeah, it, it seemed like less that he was getting into it of himself and more like, okay, man, if, if this is what you get out of this, then I'll respect that and I'll give you what you want. Yeah, he's he's just meeting them. There's, you know, they're just, he, he gets it. He's not yeah. going to say no. No, he's just going <laughs> to just gonna make the tips kiss just yeah, a little. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> I loved it. That was, that was so good. And then him getting flopped around with the whale. Like, this is a death better than I could imagine. Like, He's so happy. Yeah. Like, again, I, I mentioned Tarantino offhandedly once, but hot damn. This is just insane. You want to talk peak Tarantino? Yeah. How about that scene where they're at the Ryokan, and then suddenly the old man the comes in. The old man in, shows up, yeah. And then it's like, and you get to see, like, kind of his face from a, you know, yeah. from a more medium shot, and then it zooms in, and you're like, <laughs> yeah. It's Samurai dude. It's yeah. Samurai grandpa and he's like make copies. Yeah. <laughs> and see that little bit of like betrayal who's on whose side, that I dig cuz mm -hmm. all of the players have established themselves, their characters that I feel like I know somewhat. And yeah, I want to see how far the escape king goes kind of trying to play both sides mm -hmm. before he finally has to come down on a side. Yeah. Also, a uh, big plot point. Uh, oh, about her eyes and shit? Yeah. Yeah. So she might be related to the guy, the, the guy in the prison. Which, the which prison might make guy. sense about, like, knowing a bunch about it. I don't know. Um, I find that very interesting. Yeah. Because we don't know, like, anything about him. He's kind of been in shadows most parts. I think he might be her uncle. I could see, like, I could see them. If they're related in any way, that's, that's pretty cool. I'm all right with that. Yeah. Um... But I like him bringing up, like, so what's her Japanese name? I don't know. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, they've never asked. Mm -hmm. uh, and, yeah, he's like, and that, 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 that interest is so peculiar. And I'm like, yep. I mean, I've always suspected that a serpent might have, like, her family might have something more to do with this. Yeah, that makes sense. That, that, that checks. Speaking of a Serpa, uh, she puts an arrow in Murder Boner Guy's shoulder, and I think that is the first time she has intentionally like attacked a human being. And if you'll notice, did you see what she did with the arrow before she shot it? What's that? She took out the poison. Okay, yeah, I figured mm, she did. Yeah, yeah. yeah she only shot. shot yeah, she shoulder. clearly wasn't going for a, a kill shot, mm. but still, like her actions pretty directly led to that guy dying, and that's a line that she's. If not crossed, she's never been this close to it before. Mm. Yeah. Although she's also, she kills a lot of animals. And I think her, her bigger thing is that she does not want to kill a human being. Mm -hmm. um, but we also see that this guy is trying to murder the shit out of yeah, him. Oh, yeah. Like, Self-defense thing. Yeah, this I, is, he's going to die if I don't do this. I have to. Yeah. So this is, this is a wholehearted, like, no fucking Conway is going to get on my, no one's going to blame me if I have to put this guy down. He is nuts. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I feel like it's totally in character, totally justified. But the fact that it's justified doesn't make it not traumatic for somebody who believes as hard as she... For anybody, really. Mm -hmm. No. But, I, yeah. yeah I'm, I'm curious to see what the character fallout, if any, of that action is. I kind of doubt there will be, personally. I, I don't think we're going to see much of that. I don't know. I, I hope there is. It'd be cool. It would be cool to see that because you're right. That has been kind of a sticking point for her. Yeah. It'd be cool and to see her acknowledge that. Yeah. And it's been been juxtaposed with Sugimoto, who is basically a good, decent person, 
but when the shit goes down, he will straight murder whoever he needs to. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but that's also not his... Like, he can do other things. He's not like, no, he has to die. He's like, all right, oh, yeah. fine. I won't kill him. Did, fine, I'll oh, yeah. figure something else out. Yeah. Um, speaking of, so, so yeah, all great stuff. I, I, I absolutely loved the, all, all of this episode. Then you get to this last scene, which, yeah. Um, pacing in the show could be a little weird. A little bit weird because this scene kind of, it's like the last five minutes of this episode and it's kind of, yeah, awkwardly placed. Yeah, a little bit. Um, it's a big shift. But also, it's one of my... F- it's actually one of my favorite scenes in the show. Yeah, yeah. I loved this. Super tense. Yeah. Like, I I was just like, the second I was like, oh my... Because now I care about the grandma. I care about, I care about kid poop. And I'm like, please, what's going to happen to them? They have to be okay. Yes. And I care about eyebrows. Yeah, I, like I've, I'm coming around more to him, which I so I'm like, okay, so cool. He's gonna be a bigger character now. That's that's cool. Yeah, I'm actually happy about that. I like you, when we come to our core gang, like you know the the gang. Yeah. It's Sugimoto, uh, Asepra, and Sneak King, or uh, not Sneak King. Uh, no, yeah, no, it's, it's Sneak King yeah, for yeah. Sneak King forever now. Thank you, Sneak King for the Xbox yeah. 360. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> um, but. Yeah, if this guy became like the sixth ranger who shows up and is just helping them along the way or becomes a separate plot line that, you know, Mm -hmm. goes alongside this, I'm kind of okay with that because he's got a cool background, cool design, and he's actually kind of pure hearted. Like, not pure, pure hearted, but he's a good guy. Mm -hmm. Like, he goes out of his way to protect grandma and the kid and in clever, interesting ways. And I, I like. By the way, can I just say that my, one of my favorite lines maybe in the show now is where uh, the twin is like, we should have just killed him then and there. You idiot. Then we'd have had to have killed all the witnesses. I love my grandma, man. Don't make me do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like the fucking way he delivers that is just so like, I love my grandma, man. Don't make me do that. Yeah. I'm like, God damn it. That is... Uh. No, some of these deliveries are really good. I love how callous a lot of the seventh division dudes can be. Like when they're when they are when they're really well. Like sometimes they they blend together, as you said, with the same face. But yeah. like this sniper dude, I was I was digging him. He was neat. Yeah. Also, yeah. and and just that shot where uh, Poop Boy grabs him by the hair, leans his head back, and then mm-hmm. yeah. grazes him on the head. Oh I'm like, yeah! Oh wow! Almost died. Okay. I I, I thought that went through his head for a yeah, hot second. Same. I'm like, oh. Fuck. Fuck. Yeah. yeah. Like, that was, that's a frightening shot. And yeah, everything up after that is like, yeah, uh, how do you get out of this? And then he starts throwing out the mats. They cut a yeah. hole in the back. Mm, that, yeah, that was, that was really cool. I liked it. Yeah. So, as is so often the case with this show, it's a mixed bag. It has a lot of flaws, but an episode has not gone by that hasn't given me something that I loved. So, I'm sticking with this show real hard. Yeah, that's the that's this anime in a nutshell. It's got problems, but its problems are overcome by just these great moments of character and maybe not so much story. The story is kind of almost secondary to the character interactions yeah. and how they drive the story. It's very character driven in that manner. Yeah. It's got one goal and that's its purpose. But just following these guys has been a ball and this episode is peak wackiness and uh yeah, this show has one of the one of my favorite casts of characters I've seen. It really is something special, and yeah. it feels it just feels like this amalgam of somebody who loves what they do, did their research, and knows how to make it fun and not like boring. I I feel like I'm never bored with this show. It might have weird pacing. Yeah, it's a mixed bag. I'm sure the manga's better. I don't care. <laughs> I, I'm having fun. Yeah. Well, you know, and it's like I always say. Uh, when you're adapting to a visual medium, you have to make use of its... You have to make use of the medium that you're adapting to. And it struggled a little bit with the art and animation, but what it has succeeded in is the cast, like the voice cast and... All the deliveries are amazing. Yeah, everybody is just... All these characters feel so real to me. Like, I could not read the manga because I wouldn't have these great actors delivering everything. I wouldn't have 
you know, the good disorderful music and the pacing and everything, it's just doing such a good job at that. You wouldn't have Man with a Mission at the beginning of the episode. I know, you would have episode. that awesome <laughs> opening. Yeah, actually, we haven't <laughs> talked about that opening. That is a good opening. It's a f- amazing. I'd never skip it. Also, the end, actually, neither do I. That's weird. That's yeah, weird. I, I love the ending, too. Ending animations, whatever, but I love the ending song. Actually, it's the ending animation that I like the most, but only because I love that scrawling mural that it does. Yeah, it's yeah. fun. I had a quick question. Yeah. Sure. What do they do with the skin? They didn't. Uh, they didn't say. They've never said. I mean, we assume that he hides it, like yeah. that he has stores no, it mean, somewhere. Like, is it drying out? Is it laying in a thing? He yeah, like makes person leather out of it. I think. Like, yeah, dries it out into some kind of. In like, the past, when they did it, yeah, yeah, they like they had it dry out, but all we saw was him getting ready to skin the guy on the boat and then cut. So. Yeah. Maybe he's gonna wear it like a jacket, like the other. Like dude. the other yeah. guy. That's awesome. <laughs> that That's oh, insane. that might that might be one of the creepiest things he's done, <laughs> yeah. and he's full of creepy shit. I like Skin him just playing dude. the piano this episode. Yeah, just being maximum was creepy. <laughs> <laughs> he's such a good villain. Just, I've I've come around on him. I wasn't sure at first, but. No, Crazy Face is pretty fun. Yeah. The Shinsen Gumir, who I was worried I'd be bored by, but old man showing up like. Yeah, in disguise, the, I, I think that was pretty good. Yeah, the the old man I'm interested by. The rest of the Shinsen Gumi, like that hammerhead looking guy, like whatever, yeah, whatever, I could care less. I don't know, hammerhead guy coming through the window was pretty great. That was pretty funny, yeah. Like, <laughs> honestly, it reminded me a lot of the Fuhr from Full Metal Alchemist. That, that character design in general, and just his go, like, he reminds me a lot of him. Um, if he were sillier, if they could bind him with, like, Armstrong. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, let's. Speaking of strong arms, uh-huh. oh. uh. Megalobox or Megalobox, depending on which day of the week it is, episode 10, Pops and Fujimaki reveal that their plan was always for Joe to take a dive in his first match of Megalonia, and Team Nowhere has a falling out. Pops gets Yukiko to take custody of Sachio so that he'll be out of Fujimaki's reach if Joe refuses to take a dive. Yuri defeats Pepe Iglesias. And once again, very broad overview this there. This was a packed episode. Yeah, there were like so many scenes and things and characters and flashbacks and all this shit. Yeah, actually, wow. A uh, lot you, of stuff. I, I, I had forgotten just how packed this episode was until so you told me. And I'm like, yeah, no, kind of mm-hmm. to the gills. Yeah. yeah, and usually I take copious notes. This one, nothing. I just I I couldn't break away from watching it to type no, like I, no I just gotta let this everything's everything's coming to a head and I think like I know you have qualms with Joe's character but I feel like he is the embodiment of the driving force and I don't think that's a bad thing I love him here I feel like he is he is the thing that keeps the team going Pops is absolutely the most human like he is the most relatable human dude oh yeah but yeah. I think. Joe just being that person, the, the shonen spirit never give up. I am out there to do the one thing and I will do it. Like, I love him doing that here and that scene with him on the motorcycle and shit. Seeing Yuri for a bit and just talking to him like right near the end. That, that was, was a great scene. I loved that. Oh God, that's, yeah. That's when you realize that Joe really isn't just, I mean, yeah, obviously he's you know shonen, I gotta win and be the best and see how far I can go. But he's also lonely and angry. Mm-hmm. And when Yuri says, yeah, I found somebody who believed in me and I want to be worth that. Yeah, I want to make her happy. And he's yeah. like, oh. And Joe's like, oh, shit. I thought I had that with Pops and now maybe I don't. Yeah. So there are a lot of complicated things going on in this episode between the relationship between Joe and Nanbu, uh, the, uh, you know, the adoption of Sachio by... Uh, not Mikio. Um, Yukiko. 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 Learning about his dad and all, like, the reason he's there now. Like, yeah. yeah, finally. Like, yeah. I was like, what is, was he a boxer? What was it? And then mm-hmm. we find out that, yeah, actually, he was a scientist that was working on the technology that either y- Mikio or Yuri was using. I'm Yuri. That, that Yuri that, has. Oh, Because they show up and say, oh. there's this oversight in what he has, I think, right now. And they're like, oh, shit. That's even better. I'm glad that it was Mm -hmm. Yuri's and not Mikio's because that adds another level of, hey, Yukiko, you kind of shit at your job a little bit. Yeah. Um, So get better. Yeah. Well, and she, her assistant lady's like, yeah, we're going to take care of this. It's like, 
no, I need more. Mm-hmm. Who who in the company was out there whacking dudes? Yes. Was that her father before she took over the mm-hmm. company? That's that's the impression I get. But I mean, is there still some dirty dirt happening in the company that she doesn't know about? Yeah, and yeah. I love the idea of Yukiko grabbing some names and kicking some ass because, like Yuki. Okay, so let, let's take Joe. I think Joe in this element is being used to his full... This whole episode, Joe is used to his full effect mm-hmm, because yeah. my problem with Joe has always been that like, when it comes down to him in the ring, my interest kind of takes a drop because I'm not invested in him. On the other hand, the other characters that interact around him are all affected by his actions, his drive, what he does because Nanbu is now in a terrible situation. Mm-hmm. Yukiko has had revelations. Yuri is being pushed to test his dream up against Joe's. We're seeing all of these other characters affected by Joe, and that is effective. I like that. Like, my qualms with Joe is that, you know what, I wish Joe himself could have been a better character, but if he is not a great character all on his own, then at least he's been great for this story. Mm-hmm. Um, and he, But here, we see a very bad position for Nanbu. Oh like, yeah, this, that's the way it ends. And and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie to you. Can I can I share what I think is going to happen? Go sure. for it. Nanbu is going to tell Joe, go win this. Mm-hmm. Go win this fight. Do not let up on him. Joe is going to win. And uh anime John Cleese is going to fucking kill Nanbu. Yeah. And, no, I, I totally and, believe and it. before he uh, like, and Nambu's gonna go. Yeah, go ahead, kill me. You're not gonna kill a kid, though. Imagine that. Imagine you kill the guy who's like, you know, number one to win Megalonia, the underdog. Yeah, you, you can never get away with that. You can kill me though. And then he's gonna do it. Yeah. He's gonna kill Nambu, and Joe's going to realize. Mm-hmm. Yep. And it's going to make me cry. And it's gonna be yep. awesome. <laughs> because <laughs> I won't lie to you. Nanbu is far and away my favorite character in the show now. Like he oh, started, totally. he started off as such a piece of shit, and then very quickly I was like, "Oh wait, no, I kind of love you." <laughs> like he's he's just this poor little like anime grandpa who who wanted to train a great fighter, and they got dragged into the underworld, and now it's his last chance, and his last the li- last thing he's gonna get is you know his his best. Beating and winning, or at least you know, getting to the final round of Megalonia, and then he's gonna die, and that—that's what I think. I think that's gonna happen. I, I, yeah. I think so too. I'm, I'm right there with you. Um, and ah, uh, see, like, I I have I have problems with this show, but they're only they're only like again. I've always said like this show for me is a solid eight out of ten because the stuff that it does is only, like, a lot of the stuff that it does in terms of its visuals and its sound are really great because it's bringing me back to a bygone era. Yeah. And like, that, ooh, like, mm-hmm. I can't escape the feelings that gives me. Like, this this nostalgia, the, the, the rose of the tint on this <laughs> yep. cannot be denied. Um, and again, when it, all of its art, its character designs Yeah, guys, is we just beautiful. spent a lot of time talking about, like, the big beating heart of this story. Let's talk about this... Gungrave looking motherfucker who would have been the centerpiece of any other episode, Pepe Iglesias. Yep. Dude, uh, yeah. Pepe. I love that I love that he's this Mexican dude coming out with like this whole Day of the Dead shit yep. going on. Like that's awesome. Yeah. Not a lot of Mexican characters in anime. I just know. The fact that we get, yeah, this Mexican. It's, it's this guy and the Jaguar guy in Lupin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what? No, no. Also the pilot of the Tequila Gundam from G Gundam. <laughs> And I'm you always mean Spike Gundam. No, I Ooh, mean no. Tequila Gundam. <laughs> like, look, that that uh, arguments about the G Gundam down, is double side. <laughs> tequila Gundam is the best name of a Gundam ever. No, it's so good. So. Actually, going back to the the beating story heart of this episode, let's talk about Pops and Sachio sitting in the driveway in, in the fuck with the car, giving him the knife. Yeah, mm-hmm. like you want to you want to get revenge for your old man. Now's your chance. This is go do it. Oh mm-hmm. yeah. That oh is like th- it's like this is the best I can give you, kid. Yeah, and I'm like, oh wow, this is such a good scene because like, yep, this is what you do. You sit down a kid with a ba- with a hard like, all right, kid, what are you gonna do? I bet you would have stopped him. It'd have been like, no, no, okay, get back in here. You obviously did not learn your lesson. 
I don't even know if he would have. I don't like he's he's thinking he's dead no matter what happens. Yeah. Like maybe he shrugs and goes, if this is how he wants to go out, that's a man's decision. Yeah. I don't know. But it was it was played to great effect. And then again you get the the typical and classic, oh, but but she's got the family. She's got the kids. Yeah. Yep. (laughs) And that that's a great scene. It's a great realization on Sachio's part of like no, violence won't solve this. I'm not just going to... I mean, it will, but in the ring. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> murder won't... Yeah, well, murder, mm. <laughs> well, we'll find out. Yeah, we will. Uh, but yeah, that, that's a good scene. And poor Sachio, like the rest of the episode is wordless from him. Mm-hmm. Like He doesn't have word one, you just see his anxiety, yeah. his, his sadness, his depression, the fact that he can't be out there cheering Joe on. He can't be in his corner because he knows that if he's outside of the protection of uh, Yukiko, he could be killed. Who knows? So he, might, he might be able to get in, like, within the suite that she watches from. Like, we still have to see, because like, it, was, it wasn't a match with Joe yet. Yeah, but, but even then, just like at such a young age to get that visceral firsthand knowledge mm-hmm. that the world is fucked, the world is corrupt and terrible, and there is nothing you can do about it. The best you can do is try to live in it. And sometimes, Fuck, man. And just sometimes there aren't, the decisions aren't always clear. Yeah. That everything isn't, hey, here's your ch- choice between black and white. Yep. Go kill him. Not that easy, is it? <laughs> um, so I will say the one, the one flaw of this show in terms of its storytelling is that while it looks beautiful most, like most of the time, and I'm not going to talk about the animation of the fight scenes, um, the one thing that I think that it actually kind of slips up on a little bit is communication of information in, like, it... This is the director's first anime. Which is honestly stunning to yeah. me. Oh, yeah, that's pretty <laughs> impressive. He had to go to a bunch of people and say, all right, this is what I want to do. How do I do this effectively? Mm-hmm. There are some times where, while it's uh, very well put together, I do think that it can, its storyboarding can sometimes kind of hold it back from being what it really wants to be. Uh, and sometimes the actual pacing's a little awkward. Um, there are a lot of things at times where I feel like we're taking it, like then again maybe that's a strength of it is that we're taking the information and we're like we're inferring a lot of what it's trying to give to us instead of it kind of pushing it a little bit more forward like I'd like it to. But that being said, you know that's that's something I noticed in this episode on occasion is that I feel like it's. I, I think that's also a hallmark of the anime of the time that exactly. it's taping. Yeah, yeah, and. Boy, so many anime of that time were way worse than this one about that. Yeah, oh, well, yeah. yeah and there little. was, and I think what what this does that harkens back to things that I enjoy is it is it is dripping in atmosphere. Atmosphere mm-hmm. is what drives this show. Uh, yeah, it I is mean, about this world and these people in it trying to find their way. Like you said, through this fucked up world that really doesn't have any right answers, but they're just trying to figure out what they can do. God, that shot of the city. Mm-hmm. And just the scale of how far out these slums go, like every yeah. this used to when I was living in Tucson, which is a much uh, uh, it's it's in a valley. So mm-hmm. you drive outside in in any given direction, and you're gonna go up, mm-hmm. and you look back, and you see just how far that urban sprawl goes. Mm-hmm. You see. That that smog just hanging over the city, and and that's in Tucson. It's way worse in Phoenix. Mm. But oh man, that would make me claustrophobic. Just imagining what if my car broke down and I had to walk, and how far and how long I would have to walk before I got out physically of this hellhole that man has brought. <laughs> yeah. Oh my like, god. Freaked me the fuck out. Made me want to run away and go live in Flagstaff again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Get me up into some fucking mountains. Yeah. You know, I and I I really like what it what it's doing though. I think a lot of the shots are really good. The fucking just seeing Sachio pull out the knife and you see his reflection of him looking out and like looking pissed. Then you just see his tear fall on it and put it back. I'm like that's good. You, you're doing good. You know what? I think, yeah, there it is. I think I can say it. I like the ideas and how, uh, most of how it's presented, but there are some times where I feel like it's, it's just this close for me a lot of the time visually. Mm-hmm. But that being said, what, th- what it makes me think, how it makes me feel, after when I look back on it, mm-hmm. is usually way fonder than I am during the episode itself. I will say that. Except for the music. That's always like, yeah, 100%. I'm I'm jamming to this. And again, 
man, the character designs in this fucking show are so good. Oh. Yeah, they like, are I also love, incredible. I also love Pepe's fighting style. I like. I yeah. love that. Yeah. Seeing yeah. him like going in and out, like doing all the nice fancy footwork, and then you got that nice like pan around shot of him like oh, leading in and out. That yes. was cool. Yeah, like well, well, I think the Sakuga on a lot of these fights is not as good as I wanted to be. Uh, they're like sometimes they got these great angles, these great mm -hmm. shots, and I'm glad to see a fighter whose style is really, really visually presented here because I feel like sometimes they don't. I feel mm. like sometimes it's it's spoken rather than inferred. And here, yeah, we get to see that on display, explained as well, which is good. That's mm. anime. Yeah. Um, and well, it's also sports. Yeah, they're they're commentating the um, commentary on yeah, everything, yeah, so that yes. they have a device they can make it whatever the fuck you call it diegetic. Yeah, and getting oh man, Yuri is just a demon. That hit was really yeah. good. Like when that happened, and that not just the one, but then the the hook right after is like. Okay, that was really good. Yeah, and and some people are like, wait, was that one or two hits? I, it was yeah, I didn't see. He was I, too fast. Yeah, <laughs> and just fucking tuck him down. And also, oh, by the way, uh, one of the other things that the show is doing, and I'm really happy about it because it, it, it tries to cement some actual like believability, uh, Pepe speaks Spanish. And mm -hmm. Burrow speaks English. I, and they, with an actual English dude. Yeah. No yeah. hint of a Japanese accent. There. Yeah. Um, although, on the other hand, they cannot escape their the Japanese structure of language. They mm. put that unnatural pause in there, even though it doesn't yeah. have to be there. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, oh, that, oh, I wonder if they're going to change that line for the dub. <laughs> um, but yeah, but I yeah. like Pepe talking in, talking in Spanish. That was real good. Yeah. No, that was good stuff. And like I think that's what I like so much about this is it, it feels so Western again like just it it feels like shit that was made for a Western audience I know it's not because it's for fucking Ashton no Joe but like <laughs> why, <laughs> but it's it's doing everything that like everybody who grew up on Toonami from like you know late yep. 90s early 2000s onward that's what these shows were you know it's kind of interesting because uh, anime. Anime does this from time to time, but I feel like American cartoons do it from time to time, too, where they give more of this... Uh, you know, it happened a lot with Thundercats, um, and with uh, kind of like with Teen Titans, too, not mm -hmm. Teen Titans Go, but like where you have like a very American concept, and then they try to present it to you in a very different aesthetic, mm -hmm. a, a different point of view. And yeah, here we see Ashton Ojo turned into something far more cosmopolitan, something yeah. far more like, you know, far more Western, and that's so neat. And yeah, the show should have been on tonight. Ah, there's never a show that I wish could have gotten the uh, s uh, space dandy treatment more than Joe oh, right now, or more than yeah, Megalobox totally. right now. Ah, uh, yeah. I has anybody picked it up yet? No. What the fuck are they doing? I I'm not sure. I think it might have to do with the license, like the company in Japan. Maybe there's it's really expensive to produce, or the the music that was that's associated with it is just really expensive, and they can't get the licensing rights. It could be a whole bundle of things, but I don't know. There's got to be some good reason because I can't think of one. Yeah. Oh, if this oh was, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, you know. uh, let's get Sorry. this out. Just in case anybody was wondering how we felt about yeah. it is a, a triple eggplant, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> no, this. I think this episode has... We're getting the table setting for everything for the climax coming up, and I am... I am... 10,000% yeah. double balls deep into whatever it wants to serve at me. Like, I, I'm i loving this show. I, I have had to make one addendum for myself when I watch this show to fully enjoy it. I have to not care about the boxing part. I have to kind of, like, not care about the actual, like, boxing because it takes up, like, 15% of the show. It's never all that visually appealing to me. But it drives a force, of, again, of Joe and his interaction with the other characters and the story. So I'm like, okay... That's fine. Uh, like during these parts, I'll focus more on the characters, less on the fights, and that that I think that does me a benefit because otherwise, I think I might have been more frustrated this episode. The the one where you were talking about how visually appealing <laughs> Pepe Iglesias' fighting style is, like I'm, I mean, yes, in, in that regard. But remember, we're like on episode nine, and this is one of the first the first fight since episode one and two that I actually was into the fight. Which I'm honestly wondering if that's if it was budgetary. I'm wondering if these last few episodes might have the have the better boxing. Actually, if I had to make a guess, uh, one of the things that the series has probably struggled from is that it is a passion project mm -hmm. from a director and a studio. 
I don't think they had the money slash the uh, people to get some really good art, like the, some of the really big animators mm -hmm. in Japan out there. Because a lot of its visual style is um, sometimes composite CG for like the big sweeping shots of the arena. Mm, yeah. um, and then some really, again, character di uh, designs and the art in the show is yeah. fantastic. That, that big sweeping shot of the arena though, like... The, the use of the lighting, like I knew it had to be CG, obviously. That's not mm -hmm. a shot that you can do with traditional animation. It did not look like CG to me. Oh, it it looked, just looked good. Oh, no, it looks good. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think one of the problems that they might have had is that they didn't have some of the bigger animators on the project. They're like, no, we've got the guys that we've got, but we're going to do our best to make this look like a classic 90s show. And to that regard, they do a fantastic job, but... It hits every button I need it to. Yeah. <laughs> and that's, I'm getting everything I think it wants out of me. Can I hold an eggplant up again? Yeah, <laughs> I know. Allowed? Like, can it, I yeah. <laughs> can, we, can we double? Can we, can we sex, sex, sex couple? couple? Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, as, as the guy who's had the most to complain about, let me just make sure everyone's clear. This is one of the best shows in the last couple of years. It's just got some things that are frustrating me because I feel like other shows do some of the things it's lacking better, but the things that it's doing really well are still not like when it KO and things and yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, it, terminology. The the soundtrack, the designs, the atmosphere. Hell, the God, the opening theme's grown on me. I love the opening theme. I, I, I think the animation, like yeah, the visual metaphor is a little tacky, but oh, I fucking love it. And just seeing him smile with the cowbell, that's great. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I always did kind of love that part. Um, it it just took a while for me because. It was despondent for me. It, it was guttural and, and trashy a little bit at first, but the more I listen to it, the more it sinks in, especially as the series goes on. I feel like as the series goes on, this opening gets a little bit more interesting. <laughs> yeah, so. man. Rags to riches. That's all it is. Yep. Trash man going to the top. Well, we'll see. If we go all the way to the top next time, transition to end times. It's the end times. Uh... Go yeah. uh, convert all your money to gold. We'll see you guys in a week. <laughs>